hi there welcome to this microsoft azure video in this tutorial i'm going to walk you through on how to implement azure data factory gate integration by leveraging the azure devops for version control and safeguarding of azure data factory artifacts such as pipelines data sets linked services triggers and integration runtime so let's get started so i'm currently logged on to the dev.azure.com and of course i can see my organization name so the first thing i'm going to do is to create a project to get started so i'm going to come to this project name and i'm going to call this one adf and i can give a description so scroll down and create a project the adf project is now created so we can see things such as the overview summary dashboard wiki bot repos so i want to come to the repos and in the repos we have the files commands pushes branches tags pull request and advanced security so for now i want to go ahead and create a new repository so i'm going to come here and click on this and i want to choose new repository so for this i'm going to give a meaningful name by the way it's going to be the git repository type so i'm going to call this one adf repo and it's going to have a readme file so when i click on create we are currently in the main branch which is the default branch where our developmental work will take place so for now we can see we have nothing in this except the readme file now that's fine let's go to the azure portal and create our azure data factory so i'm going to come here and this is my portal.azure.com and i can go on and create my azure data factory i want to actually come into this resource group and then in the resource group i'm going to click on the create and then it's going to take me to the marketplace and i can go on and search for azure data factory and then press enter so i can go on and select the azure data factory click on that and we can go on and create so click on the create so after we click on the create we can give a meaningful name for our azure data factory having selected the subscription and the resource group so for me i'm going to use the visual studio enterprise subscription and this is going to be in the adf resource group and of course i'm going to call this one uh Biola. 101 and this should be globally available so this is fine so it's going to be stored in the east us and of course i can even choose my closest region so this is going to be um, uk south and of course it's going to have this version so go ahead and click on review and create so this is going to be validated and then we can go on and click create and it's going to be initialized and then submitted okay your deployment is complete so we can go on to the resource and then access the azure data factory and launch the studio so click on go to resource and there we go so we have the abiola 101 data factory version 2 and we will go ahead and click on launch studio so when i click on that that's going to launch in a separate tab for me the azure data factory okay so this is the Azure Data Factory the home page. I'm going to click on this and you can see we have the home page, the author, the monitor, manage, and learning setup. So, by the way, we're going to see this option to set up code repo, but that's fine. I'm going to come to the author. Now, when I come to the author, you can see we have absolutely no pipelines, no data set, data flow, and the power query. Now, this is fine. So, at the top left hand corner here, I can click on this and choose set up code repository. So, click on that. So when I click on that, this is going to ask me to choose my repository type. This is going to be Azure DevOps. I'm going to cover this maybe in the future, the GitOps. So click on the Azure DevOps Git, and then this is going to automatically pick up my Microsoft Android ID. This is going to be cloud-based. Go ahead and click on Continue. So when I click on Continue, I'm going to choose my Azure DevOps organization name. This is going to be Abiola001, the same thing that we have uh, in this environment at the top here so that's fine and then i can choose my project name so click on that i'm going to choose the adf and then i can choose my repository name click on that and this is going to be the azure repo that we created and of course we are going to have the collaboration branch when i, when I click on this, you're going to see select the branch name where you will collaborate with others maybe with other developers from which you will publish your artifact so it's going to be main branch and then it's going to have the adf underscore publish which is the published branch and it's going to have this root folder so that's all for now and uh, i'm going to uncheck this import existing resources and then click on apply okay so you can see repo connected repository settings has been successfully updated which is cool so for now we are currently in the main branch the collaboration branch and that's cool so when i click on that i'm going to see it's going to automatically have this adf underscore publish branch and of course the underscore publish is going to actually have the arm which is the azure resource manager and templates so for now we can always go back to the live mode so when i go to the live mode i'm actually outside there so you can see we have 
git enabled in your data factory publishing data factory mode is disabled no worries go ahead and come back to the azure devops git and then i'm back in the main branch now in the main branch i want to just quickly create a pipeline so i'm going to click on this ellipsis and i want to choose new pipeline so for the new pipeline i'm going to give this a name let me just call this on my first data pipeline so data pipeline okay that's done so click outside and then i'm going to close this properties for now so you can see we have the pipeline my first data factory so for this i'm going to choose a weight activity so i'm just going to type in that and drag drag across to the canvas so for the weight activity we're going to have the settings the name and then the user properties so for the name i'm just going to just leave it as this anyway so we have this weight activity uh for the settings i can just specify the wait time in second let's just do maybe um five seconds okay that's going to be fine so for now that's sorted so i can go on and save all so when i click on the save all it's going to show this comment comment adding pipeline for still pipeline so i can go on and click on okay so when i click on okay we're going to see it's going to be saved into our git repository successfully saved all changes in the git which is super cool i can go on and click on publish so when I click on public, this is going to generate all my changes. And then I'm going to see this window. Go ahead and click on OK. Publishing generates completed, successfully published from the collaboration branch. So this is going to automatically start generating the Azure Resource Manager template. So this has been generated. Let's wait. OK, beautiful. We have this succeeded. So when I come back to the switch to life mode, I should be able to see my first data pipeline, which is cool. Let's go back to the adf repo so when i come back here i can right click and i can refresh so when i refresh i'm going to see that we have pipeline which is now published already so which is cool now i can click on this to expand or to move down so i'm going to see the name of my pipeline first data pipeline dot json so when i click on that i'm going to see you updated adf underscore published just now so we're going to see the name for the pipeline and then the property including activity so we have the weight activity the type weight and so on and so forth which is cool i'm going to click on this adf underscore publish so when i click on that i'm going to see the arm template and parameters deployed on this date and so on and so forth i can click on this abiola 101 i'm going to see the global parameters and then we have the linked template and then we have the template for the factory and then we have the template parameters for factory dot j javascript object notation so when i just click on one of these we're going to see we have quite some information such as the schema and then we have the current version of the parameters and then we have things such as the type stream we have the name of the data factory and so on and so forth now that's fine so we have published something into the main branch so that's cool let's go back to the azure data factory so we are back to the azure data factory and i'm going to switch back to the azure devops gate so basically i'm currently in the main branch so what about if we have a data engineer that is tasked to move data from google cloud storage account to the azure storage account using the azure data factory so we can easily create a new branch for that data engineer so this is the main branch so i'm going to click on that and i can go ahead and create a new branch so when i click on the new branch it's going to be based on the main branch the collaboration branch let's just call this one a feature data engineer and click on create so this is going to be based on the main branch okay so as soon as we create that feature branch of course it's going to automatically inherit the first data pipeline that we created which is super cool now let's go ahead and create a copy data activity so click on this ellipsis i want to choose the new pipeline and then for this let's just call this one um, copy data from gcs to azure storage or blob storage so i can click outside so you can see we have the copy data from gcs to azure blob storage which is cool so i can type or let me just close this for now i can set for the copy data activity so drag into the canvas and then we're going to just stick with this general name let's come to the source now for the source we need the source data set so click on this new and then i want to search for the google cloud storage and then click on continue so this is going to be a text delimited and click on that and choose continue so let's just call this one um, gcs delimited text and for the link service i want to create a new link service to the source so for the link service i'm going to get the access key id so i'm going to come to my 
console.cloud.google.com and of course i've got a bucket which is my storage account and within the bucket i've got two um folders we have the data engineer 212 and then the sales multiple files so click on that folder and i'm going to click on this innermost folder and then i've got this sales 2022.csv file so to get the access key i'm going to come to the settings and under the settings i'm going to have two tabs project tab and the interoperability come to the interoperability and then we have the storage url so go ahead and scroll down so i'm going to make sure that my default project for the interoperable access is enabled so we have this interoperable API uses your default project for blah, blah, blah. So this must be enabled for this to work, otherwise it's going to get an error. So basically, I've got my access, access key for my user account. You can always click on this create a new a key. So for this, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to delete it later on anyway. Control C to copy. Come back to the data factory. I'm going to paste in the access key ID. Control V. And let's go back and copy the secret. And I will come back here. I will get rid of this. Control V and we're gonna have the service URL, which is gonna be https storage.googleapi.com. So go ahead and click on test connection, and of course, this is gonna give us a successful connection because we have this um, default project for the interoperable access specified. So we have the connection successful. Go ahead and click on create. So I'm gonna get this. Link service will be published immediately as data factory can store credentials in the Git repo. This change will be published immediately. This may cause issues on the main branch and on the published resources that depend on this linked service. So to avoid immediate publish of linked services, we recommend using Azure Keyboard. So we don't want to actually make it too technical. I'm just going to go ahead and click on proceed. So we can see we have the successful save Google Cloud linked service. So go ahead and provide my file path. So the Google Cloud storage uses what's called the bucket and the directory and then the files. So I'm going to click on this browse and I will point to the sales multiple files. And in that, I've got this sales folder and I'm going to see this sales 2022.csv file. Click on OK and then we're going to have the first row as headers and then import schema from connection store. Go ahead and click OK. So that's sorted. And we have the source. And we're going to go to the destination, the sync. So for the sync, we're going to sync to our Azure Blob Storage. So click on this new. And I want to search for the Azure Blob Storage and click on the continue. And it's going to be text delimited. And let's call this one Azure Delimited Text 1. And we'll create a linked service, new link service. And I'm going to scroll down to make it faster. I need my subscription, of course. Go ahead and click on that. I'm going to choose the Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. And of course, I've got this Production 101 storage account. Click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Test Connection. So when I click on Test Connection, this is going to be successful. Brilliant. Click Create. And then we're going to see the same prompt. Go ahead and click on OK. And that's fine. So we can go on and specify the file path. So we need the container and possibly a directory and then the, of course, we don't need the file name. So go ahead and click on the browse and I want to choose the prod container with nothing, go ahead and click OK. And then in this case, I can even create a directory. Let me just call this one transaction, that's fine. That's going to be created for us. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the import schema. So this is going to have first row as headers. So click OK. So that is sorted. So we can go on and um, save all. So as soon as I click on the save all, I'm going to see we have this adding pipeline, um, the limited text, and then and this and this. So these are the two linked services, and then we have one pipeline at the top. So go ahead and click on OK. So this is going to be saved in our Git repo. So we can see saved automatically, and which is cool. Now, don't forget, this is actually created, this copy data is actually created in the feature branch for our data engineer. So when I click on this and I go back to the main branch, let's see what we've got. I'm going to cancel this. So when I come back to the main branch, so we can see we have only the first data pipeline. We can't see the new copy data activity from the data engineer, the feature branch. So when I go to the main branch, um, the switch to the live data factory, we're going to see only the first data pipeline. Well, so now, this is fine. Okay, so nothing has been published into the live data factory. So, but it's actually already in the Azure DevOps, the repo that we created. So, I'm going to go back and switch to the Azure DevOps gate. And when I come back there, of course, I'm going to go ahead and let me come to the 
feature branch. So in the feature branch, we're gonna have the two data pipelines. So that's cool. When I go to the feature data engineer, so we're gonna see we have the data set, the data set we created, and then the linked services. I'm gonna click on the data set so we can see we have the Azure delimited text dot JavaScript object notation and then the GCS delimited text. So I can investigate this for now. When I click on that, I'm gonna see the information such as the name and then we have the uh, linked service name we have the azure blob solid one and then the type is linked service and then we have some kind of information i'm going to come to the gcs delimited and when i come to the gcs this is going to give me all the information about the gcs the whole thing such as the reference name the type and so many other things like the name of the file since 2022.csv file and when i scroll down i'm going to see the schema so the schema basically are the columns from our csv file so we have the year column schema and then we have the type string we have the product units and then the price and the sales so this basically are all the columns from our data from the google cloud storage account in this bucket that i showed you so this um sales 2022 now that's fine let's go back here so okay now we have the linked services and then we have these two linked services and then we have the data pipeline so for the data pipeline we have two of them like can you see we have the copy data from gcs to azure and then we have the first one but in the main branch for now we only have the weight the single pipeline that we publish the weight activity so that is fine let's go back to the azure data factory so we are still in the feature branch we can click on this now to match our changes into the main branch we're going to click on this and then we want to choose what's called the pull request so click on that so as soon as i click on the pull request this is going to automatically launch this um, page for me and then we're going to see the information on new pull request from the feature data engineer branch into the main branch so for this let's just give you the title let's just say um, created data pipeline and moved data from gcs to azure blog okay so click on that and then we can give a description so i'm going to go ahead and scroll down and then i can put in the name of the reviewer i'm going to choose myself and then click on create so as soon as i click on create i'm going to see we have this information created data pipeline blah blah, blah and this is Abela proposing to match the feature data engineer into the main branch. So for now, under the overview, we have no match conflict. And then we have other information such as the Abela created the pull request. So that's fine for now. As the reviewer, so I can match what's coming from the feature branch into the main branch. So basically, just go ahead and click on this. Now we have options such as the approve. The match or you can approve with suggestion or wait for auto or reject so we we'll to go ahead and approve so as soon as we approve we're going to see um abiola approved the pull request and then we can complete that process now we we'll click on this option we have some option at the bottom we have things like the complete mark as draft and abandon so we're going to actually complete this process and then we're going to see this match type so we have the match no fast forward and then this is going to happen after the margin from the feature branch to the main branch so what's going to happen post completion options so we can choose to delete the feature uh, data engineering branch after margin and we can customize match commit message now let's say we need this data engineer to keep on using this feature branch of course we're not going to recommend deleting but this is going to be fine complete associated work items for margin so go ahead and click on complete match as soon as i click on that we're going to see margin pull request and then let's just wait for this to be concluded so there we go we have the matched PR8 created data pipeline and moved blah, blah blah. So we can see we have completed and which is super cool. So of course we can even choose to delete the source branch, but that's not required. Now let's go back to let's if, let's come to this file. So when I come to this file, we're gonna see that oh we have the ADF report and then we have the data set. So basically we're gonna have all of this information more detail. So you can always scroll down and check them out. So there we go. So these are some of the changes that has occurred all right which is now in the main branch now let's come to the branches when i come to the branches we can see we have the main branch and then the feature branch and the adf underscore publish now let's go to the main branch now so when we come to the main branch there we go you can, you can see it has been fully um, published to the main branch the collaboration in the ground which is super cool so we have the data set 
and then we have the linked services we have the uh, pipeline which is cool now let's go back to the azure data factory so after we've done that i can come switch back from here to the main branch so when i switch back to the main branch i'm going to see we have the two of them right now which is super amazing so we have the copy data and then we have the first pipeline which is super cool now by the way i could you know just go ahead and debug so just to complete that process we'll click on the debug and then the data will transfer from the google plus Summit account into the prod container so let's just wait for the activity to be completed so we can see it's been queued let me just go ahead and refresh refresh and let's see okay succeeded so that has been completed and then when i come back to my storage let me go to the storage and i want to click on the production 101 and i'll go to the containers and then click on the prod container and then we're going to see we have the transaction directory that we created and then we have the sys 2022 which is cool now let's go back to our data pipeline now in the data pipeline i'm going to go ahead and switch to the live demo so when i switch to the live you can see unfortunately we still have the first data pipeline why because we are yet to publish into the live azure data factory no problem now before i go on and publish let me just come to the manage we want to see the linked services so for now we can see we have the two linked services with related zero zero so as soon as we publish it's going to turn to one one so no problem so i'm going to go back to the azure devops git because we can only publish from the main branch not from the feature branch you can see this is disabled so we can't publish anything from the feature branch we can only pub publish from the main branch so i'm back to the main branch so i can go on and click on publish so when i publish this is going to gather all my changes go ahead and click ok and then this is going to start deploying the changes to the data factory and then it's going to generate the arm template so let's wait completed and the azure resource manager is going to start generating so let's go on okay generating arm template succeeded so that's cool so i can come switch from the main branch to the live mode when i go to the live mode i'm going to see we're going to have two data pipeline which is cool so you can see we have the copy data from gcs to azure blobs now which is cool so we can access them out and when i come to the manage and i'm going to see the link side is now turning to one one not zero zero so this is basically how we can integrate microsoft azure data factory into the azure devops I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, and comment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.